Most people in our society don't have the opportunity to spend a lot of time in a forest, much less 70 feet above the forest floor. Ecologist Nalini Natkarni is a pioneer in exploring forest canopies high above the forest floor. She and colleagues have devised ways of climbing using ropes, harnesses, and platforms that don't harm trees. The insight scientists have gained about forest ecology by spending time in the canopy help make a strong case for conservation. Forest canopies support a tremendous number of plant and animal species never found on the forest floor. They harness the sun's energy, gather nutrients from rainfall, and strain pollutants from the air. But for Nalini, there has always been a connection to forests that goes beyond their biological values. What other values do trees present to human beings? How might people other than scientists express the aesthetic, spiritual, or recreational values of the forest? Can we create new forms of expression that provide insights for conservation by branching out and seeing the forest canopy through new eyes? I guess really for me, the reason I'm here and the reason why I invited all of you here is because I think, um, I think the trees need us. I, need, I think this forest needs us to do something, to be aware of something in it. To explore this idea, Nalini invited a diverse group of people to spend a week camping, climbing trees, and recording their impressions at Ellsworth Creek on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State. But the idea <laughs> of this, this program is to try to do new kinds of conservation. I mean, you know, the Nature Conservancy does a certain kind of conservation by buying up land. Um, other conservation groups do activist work. But the National Geographic is trying to find different avenues or ways of doing conservation. So I responded for the call for proposals with this idea of bringing together a group of people who could articulate the different sets of values that trees and forest canopies provide. Painters, musicians, teachers, singers, and dancers came from around the country to see how being in the canopy would affect their art. Two blind students were also invited to bring new ways of seeing. Nalini invited some scientists and graduate students to facilitate and participate in the exchange. After introductions, the first order of business was learning to climb. Yeah, that's it. Now you've got it. Naturally, there was some trepidation about leaving the ground. The musicians started playing as soon as they made it to their platforms. Their notes began to beautifully weave through the forest. Matt Dunlop is an arborist and biology student used to being alone in the forest, rigging trees and collecting data. He talked about how, to him, in the platform, the music intertwined with the forest. It also seems I don't know, when I was listening to it, you could almost imagine like um, a blanket of, of like warm color just kind of flowing over the trees, oh, wow, over the treetops. Really? Like when I was listening to her, wow, you just that's kind of imagine it kind of going up and down over the treetops, over the top, down to the bottom, over the top. That's a beautiful analogy here. Judith St. Croix is a New York City based composer who is working on an opera about the rainforest. She wants to write operas that include all kinds of people. During the week, she came up with ideas to make a spontaneous opera and make the production of it a participatory process for the group. There's different patterns that are suggested, and each one of these patterns could be a different musical idea. And they could be um, created by different musicians without having to read notes and read notation. Mm -hmm. So they could just pick up an instrument and make their interpretation of what the rhythm of this shape is and the pattern is. And so then um, both professional and amateur musicians could play together and, and experiment and make a piece of music. Scientists learn something about how musicians are inspired. Do you, I mean, I know when Isaac was talking about coming here, he was talking about getting the feeling of the canopy, getting the feeling of the yeah. forest in through him and let, just letting it come out his flute. Yeah. Well, Can I you do that? Of, yeah, a little. Sort of improvise? Or yeah. Or you need to sort of... Well, there's, there's sort of two to it. There's an intellectual way and then there's just, kind of, I mean, you can just improvise. Think of something climbing yeah. up the tree. I don't know. Or, right. um, you know yeah, like climbing up the tree. Like... Yeah. <laughs> out when I, whenever I'm out in the open, uh, and I've met a few musicians who are the same way, and you're not thinking, you're not playing, you know, a specific 
written piece of music, the music does just come out of nowhere, and you don't know where it comes from. And if you make a mistake, you don't even think of it as a mistake because you just kind of go with it, you know. So, yeah. Hmm. So I'm just trying to figure that out. Diana Schein is a painter with little formal background in science. After several days in the forest, she noticed and became fascinated with similarities and differences in local ecosystems. She began to paint a series showing each different ecosystem. Susan Arand is another painter. She discovered some pitfalls of painting in the canopy. So that's a view looking up. Yes. The, the challenge I'm, was that the view I liked was at the low end of the platform. The platform was tilted. Yes. <laughs> so I'm sitting you there with it. And it. then everything, was, all my stuff would slide. Oh, no. The painting would kind of slide. And then I'd get panicked and kind of ooch over. <laughs> but then I couldn't see the view. And then I'd scoot back. And I'd put your own hand on Eric Temple teaches middle school in Washington State. Like many Washingtonians, he worked as a forester when he was younger. I've been in forest for a variety of reasons for, for years and years and years. And... I, but I've never climbed up in a, in a tree way up high in the, in the trees. And um, that's, that's always been an intriguing mm -hmm. place to be, so I, I, I jumped on this opportunity. Plus, it's, it's uh, clearly a, a, an interesting topic to weave into to education for, for students. And I think one of the reasons I'm here, I, I think one of the reasons Melanie invited me was to see how I could, I could work 